please evacuate this building. Please evacuate this building. Detecting smoke. At their core, smoke alarms are very simple devices that need only two functions, a way of detecting smoke and a way of alerting people to the problem. From new technology involving lasers to old world technology that relies on a lone individual sitting in a tower on the side of a mountain just waiting to see smoke, all do the same thing in different ways. The two most commonly used smoke alarms, mainly because they are inexpensive, are photoelectric and ionization detector alarms. The difference between the two lies in how they detect smoke particles. Depending on the conditions of the fire, one type is usually better than the other. Many other kinds of detectors exist that are more expensive and often situation-specific, such as needing to protect classified documents or computer servers. These tend to be much more sensitive and allow for many different levels of detection and alarm. The most common of these is aspiration detectors. Photoelectric detectors use a beam of light sent from a light-emitting diode LED, that is detected by a photocell. There is a common misconception that the photocell receives light at all times from the LED, and when smoke gets in the way, the alarm is triggered. Some similar to the way a door alarm at a convenience store often works. This misconception ignores one glaring problem. It would require a large amount of smoke to block the light from the photocell, making it extremely insensitive. A person would be dead from smoke inhalation long before the detector would ever go off. What is actually happening in photoelectric fire alarms is the LED sends a beam of light, usually down a T-shaped chamber. Sitting at the bottom of the T is the photocell. When smoke enters the chamber, some of the light is scattered by the particles, with some rays getting sent down to the photocell. When this photocell detects light, it generates an electrical current that triggers the alarm at a certain threshold. Once that current stops, the smoke is cleared, the alarm will stop. Photoelectric detectors are better at detecting slow, smoldering, and therefore generally smokier fires. Ionization detectors use ionizing radiation from a material known as americium-241. Ionizing radiation is simply radiation from substances that can free electrons from an atom or molecule, the net results being ions that have a specific electric charge of either positive or negative. The detectors use a small amount of americium-241 contained in a small chamber. This chamber is made up of two oppositely charged metal plates that are kept a small distance apart. When the alpha particles interact with the air in the chamber, they produce ions. The positively charged plate attracts the negative ions, and the negatively charged plate attracts the positive ions. This system creates a small electric current. When smoke enters the chamber, the particles attach themselves to the charged ions and restore them back to a neutral electrical state. This disrupts the electric current and an alarm is triggered. Hot air can also change the rate at which ionization occurs within the chamber, and this will also trigger the alarm. Ionization detectors are much more common than photoelectric detectors because they are less expensive and better at detecting smaller amounts of smoke that come from fast flaming fires. If you're worried about your house having so-called nuclear radiation in it, don't. The small amount of radiation found in the detector is practically harmless, being predominantly alpha radiation. This type cannot even penetrate a piece of paper and is blocked by just several centimeters of air. The only danger comes from if you inhale the particles, so no taking apart the ionization chamber and huffing the air in it to try to develop superpowers. Lung tissue damage, increasing your risk of lung cancer and other such health problems may not be the superpower you are hoping for. Plus, the superhero name Wheezy won't exactly instill fear into the hearts of evil doers the world over. The differing strengths of these two types of sensors has led to the creation of detectors that employ both types of systems. This allows for the rapid detection of both small smoldering fires and fast-moving ones. The less common aspirating smoke detectors use a fan to draw in air from the surrounding environment. Next, a system of filtering, sensing, and analyzing the air sample is employed. Depending on the environment needing protection, this system can be as sensitive, some as much as a thousand times as much as a standard photoelectric or ionization detector, or advanced as the situation requires. Should the system detect any type of negative environment, such as small amounts of smoke, small changes in temperature, or flickering light, as from a flame, it can notify the appropriate personnel in many different ways. Multiple levels of warning can trigger different responses depending on the stage of the fire, from simply notifying personnel of a pending problem to communicating with a fire alarm control panel to adjust air conditioning or release different types of fire suppressing agents, or all of the above. Bonus facts. Americium-241 is a man-made metal discovered by Glenn Seaborg in 1944. It is produced when plutonium atoms absorb neutrons in nuclear reactors. It has a half-life of 432 years.
The first detection system that had the ability to sense smoke was created by Grain Archer from Bern in 1922. The first underwriter's laboratory listing for a smoke detection device was obtained by Walter Kidd in 1929 and was used to release a total flooding CO2 system for shipboard uses. Bonus Fact 3. The first ionization chamber for the purposes of detecting smoke was inadvertently discovered by Walter Jaeger in the 1930s while he was attempting to develop a poison gas detector. In the early 1940s, Jaeger and Melly got together and created the first edition of an ionization detector that we use today. This first attempt used an enormous power supply and required a 220-volt system. It wasn't until the 1960s that Americium-241 was used, requiring much less voltage. In in 1964, First Alert was able to develop a 24-volt ionization detector. The widespread use of smoke detectors in households wasn't feasible until a year later, when Dwayne Pearsale and Stanley Peterson created a single-station photoelectric detector that was powered by a battery. Bonus Fact 4 96% of all homes in the U.S. have at least one smoke alarm, 75% have one that actually works. About 66% of all deaths from home fires were the result of homes that had no working smoke detector. Smoke alarms that fail are usually the result of disconnected or dead batteries, the latter of which comprises 25% of all smoke alarm failures. As such, the NFPA recommends that you check your smoke detector and change out the batteries twice a year. For those who live in areas that have daylight saving time, it is recommended that you do this when you change your clocks. An incident has been reported in the building. Please await further instructions. Achtung, im Gebäude ist eine Gefahrensituation gemeldet worden. Bitte bleiben Sie ruhig und warten Sie auf weitere Anweisungen. Dies ist ein Feueralarm. Bitte verlassen Sie das Gebäude umgehend über die nächsten Fluchtwege. Die Feuerwehr ist alarmiert. This is a fire alarm. Please leave the building immediately by the nearest available exit. Ceci est une alarme incendie. Veuillez évacuer immédiatement les locaux par la sortie la plus proche. Esto es una alarma de incendio. Abandonen por favor el edificio inmediatamente por la salida de evacuación. Achtung, Achtung! Dies ist eine Gefahrenmeldung. Bitte verlassen Sie das Gebäude über die nächsten Ausgänge. Attention, please. This is an emergency. Please leave the building by the nearest available exit. This is a fire brigade operation. The emergency situation in the basement is clear. Please stay calm. There is no danger present. Die Gefahrensituation ist jetzt behoben. Wir entschuldigen uns für jegliche Unannehmlichkeiten. The emergency is now cancelled. We apologize for any inconvenience. put smoke alarms to the test and what she found prompted a Minnesota fire marshal to change what he has in his own home. Smoke alarms are by far the most effective way to get your family out safely when there's a fire. Still, statistics show one out of every four people who die in a house fire die when there's a working smoke alarm in the home. If it starts getting smoke in here, just put this mask on. So we went to one of the leading experts in Minnesota, Jamie Novak, to put them to the test. There are three types you can buy. This is the ionization smoke detector. This is normally the one that most people have in their house because they're the most inexpensive. Ionization tend to detect open flaming fires faster and photoelectric tend to detect slow smoldering fires faster. 
There's also a dual sensor, which incorporates both technologies. With the help of Coon Rapids Fire Marshal Todd Williams, Novak mounted the three types to the ceiling of a Coon Rapids home. We first set a smoldering fire. Now we'll simulate somebody falling asleep, dropping a cigarette in here. A smoldering fire smokes for a long time before it turns to flames, if it ever does. The majority of people who die in a fire die from breathing in too much smoke, not the fire itself. A lot of the slow smoldering fires tend to be at night when you're asleep and not going to react. The slow smoldering fire during the day isn't that big and dangerous because you should notice the smoke and have plenty of time to get out. The dual sensor is the first to sound, 32 minutes and 40 seconds after the smoldering fire started. 10 seconds later, the photoelectric starts to blare. You can still see clearly through the room. Another 15 minutes go by, and the smoke started to irritate my lungs. And it's starting to bother my eyes, so it's time to put the mask on. This will help me with my breathing. As time ticks by, the ionization smoke alarm still hasn't sounded. It becomes harder to see through the smoke. Novak eventually needs to put on a mask, and Williams decides it's time to retreat. Definitely want to get out of this room. So if I would wake up without a smoke detector and sit up in a smoke condition, it would really be tough. Then you factor in the sleeping and darkness. It would be scary at this point to get out of your house. Nearly an hour after the photoelectric and the combination smoke alarm sounded, the ionization smoke alarm finally went off. I truly am surprised at the big difference between the two. So how do the smoke alarms fare in a flaming fire? We're going to show you. This is your kitchen fire or children playing with matches. All three types went off within three and a half minutes of each other. What's important to note is during our test, we could still get out safely when all of the smoke alarms sounded. Do you think if more people had photoelectric smoke detectors in their home, more lives could be saved? I think so. I think on some of the slow smoldering fires, that might be a big difference that make the difference between being alive or dead after a fire.